The van Sittert Zernike theorem, named after physicists Peter Hendrik van Sittert and Fritz Zernike, is a formula in coherence theory that states that under certain conditions the Fourier transform of the mutual coherence function of a distant, incoherent source is equal to its complex visibility. This implies that the wavefront from an incoherent source will appear mostly coherent at large distances. Intuitively, this can be understood by considering the wavefronts created by two incoherent sources. If we measure the wavefront immediately in front of one of the sources, our measurement will be dominated by the nearby source. If we make the same measurement far from the sources, our measurement will no longer be dominated by a single source, both sources will contribute almost equally to the wavefront at large distances. This reasoning can be easily visualized by dropping two stones in the center of a calm pond. Near the center of the pond, the disturbance created by the two stones will be very complicated. As the disturbance propagates towards the edge of the pond, however, the waves will smooth out and will appear to be nearly circular. The van sittert zernike theorem has important implications for radio astronomy. With the exception of pulsars and masers, all astronomical sources are spatially incoherent. Nevertheless, because they are observed at distances large enough to satisfy the van sittert zernike theorem, these objects exhibit a non-zero degree of coherence at different points in the imaging plane. By measuring the degree of coherence at different points in the imaging plane the so-called visibility function of an astronomical object, a radio astronomer can thereby reconstruct the source's brightness distribution and make a two-dimensional map of the source's appearance. <laughs> Statement of the theorem Consider two very distant parallel planes, both perpendicular to the line of sight, and let's call them source plane and observation plane, if gamma 12 u v 0 display style gamma underscore 12 u v 0 is the mutual coherence function between two points in the observation plane then gamma 12 u v 0 equals i l M E minus two Pi I U L plus V M D L D M Display style gamma underscore twelve U V zero equals I I N T I L M E carrot minus two Pi I all plus V M D L D M where L display style L and M display style M are the direction cosines of a point on a distant source in the source plane U display style u and v display style v are respectively the x distance and the y distance between the two observation points on the observation plane in unit of wavelength and i display style i is the intensity of the source this theorem was first derived by peter hendrik van sittert in 1934 with a simpler proof provided by fritz zernike in 1938 topic the mutual coherence function the space-time mutual coherence function for some electric field e t display style e t measured at two points in a plane of observation call them 1 and 2 is defined to be gamma 12 tau equals lim t infinity 1 2 t minus t t e 1 t e 2 
T minus tau d T display style gamma underscore 12 tau equals lim underscore T to in a T F R a C 1 2 T int underscore T carrot T e underscore 1 T e underscore 2 carrot asterisk T tau D T where tau display style tau is the time offset between the measurement of e t display style e t at observation points 1 and 2 the mutual coherence between two points may be thought of as the time averaged cross correlation between the electric fields at the two points separated in time by tau display style tau Thus, if we are observing two fully incoherent sources we should expect the mutual coherence function to be relatively small between the two random points in the observation plane, because the sources will interfere destructively as well as constructively. Far away from the sources, however, we should expect the mutual coherence function to be relatively large because the sum of the observed fields will be almost the same at any two points. Normalization of the mutual coherence function to the product of the square roots of the intensities of the two electric fields yields the complex degree of second order coherence correlation coefficient function gamma 12 tau equals gamma 12 tau i 1 i 2 Display style gamma underscore twelve tau equals frac gamma underscore twelve tau sqrt i underscore one sqrt i underscore two. Topic: Proof of the theorem. Let x y display style x y and X Y display style X Y be respectively the Cartesian coordinates of the source plane and the observation plane. Suppose the electric field due to some point from the source in the source plane is measured at two points p one display style p underscore one and p two display style p underscore 2 in the observation plane the position of a point in the source may be referred to by its direction cosines l m display style l m since the source is distant its direction should be the same at p 1 display style p underscore 1 as at p Two. Display style p underscore two. The electric field measured at p one. Display style p underscore one can then be written using phasors e one l m t equals a l m T minus R one C E minus I Omega T minus R one C R one Display style E underscore one L M T equals A left L M T F R A C R underscore one C right F R A C E carrot I Omega left T F R A C R underscore one C right R underscore one where R one Display style R underscore one is the distance from the source to P one display style P underscore one Omega display style Omega is the angular frequency of the light and a 
Display style A is the complex amplitude of the electric field. Similarly, the electric field measured at P two display style P underscore two can be written as E two L M T equals A L M T minus R two C E minus I Omega T minus R two C R two Display style E underscore two L M T equals A left L M T F R A C R underscore two C right F R A C E carrot I Omega left T F R A C R underscore two C right R underscore two Let us now calculate the time averaged cross coral Asian between the electric field at P one Display style p underscore one and p two display style p underscore two e one l m t e two l m t equals a l M T minus R one C A L M T minus R two C times E I Omega R one C R one times E minus I Omega R two C R two Display style big Langle E underscore one L M T E underscore two carrot asterisk L M T big wrangle equals big Langle of left L M T F R A C R underscore one C right a carrot asterisk left L M T F R A C R underscore two C right big wrangle times F R A C E carrot I Omega F R A C R underscore one C R underscore one times FRAC E carrot I Omega FRAC R underscore two C R underscore two because the quantity in the angle brackets is time averaged and arbitrary offset to the temporal term of the amplitudes may be added as long as the same offset is added to both. Let us now add R one C Display style FRAC R underscore one C to the temporal term of both amplitudes. The time averaged cross correlation of the electric field at the two points therefore simplifies to E one L M T E two L M T equals a L M T A L M T minus R two minus R one C times E I Omega R one minus R two C R one R two 
Display style big Langle E underscore one L M T E underscore two carrot asterisk L M T big wrangle equals big Langle A L M T A carrot asterisk left L M T F R A C R underscore two R underscore one C right big wrangle times F R A C E carrot I Omega left F R A C R underscore one R underscore two C right R underscore one R underscore two, but if the source is in the far field, then the difference between R one display style R underscore one and R two display style R underscore two will be small compared to the distance light travels in time. T display style T T display style t is on the same order as the inverse bandwidth this small correction can therefore be neglected further simplifying our expression for the cross correlation of the electric field at p 1 display style p underscore 1 and p 2 display style p underscore 2 2 e 1 l m t e 2 l m t equals a l m t a l m t times e i Omega R one minus R two C R one R two Display style Langle E underscore one L M T E underscore two carat asterisk L M T Wrangle equals Langle A L M T A carat asterisk L M T Wrangle times F R A C E carat I Omega left F R A C R underscore one R underscore two C right R underscore one R underscore two Now A L M T A L M T Display style Langle A L M T A carrot asterisk L M T Wrangle is simply the intensity of the source at a particular point I L M Display style I L M so our expression for the cross correlation simplifies further to e 1 l m t e 2 l m t equals i l m e i omega R one minus R two C R one R two Display style Langle E underscore one L M T E underscore two carat asterisk L M T Wrangle equals I L M F R A C E carat I Omega left F R A C R underscore one R underscore two C right R underscore one R underscore two To calculate the mutual coherence function from this expression, simply integrate over the entire source. Gamma 12 u v 0 equals source i l m e i omega r 1 minus r 2 c r 1 R 
2 d s display style gamma underscore 12 u v 0 equals i i n t underscore text r m source i l m f r a c e caret i omega left f r a c r underscore 1 r underscore 2 c right r underscore 1 r underscore 2 d s note that cross terms of the form a 1 l m T A two L M T Displacedyle Langle A underscore one L M T A underscore two carrot asterisk L M T Wrangle are not included due to the assumption that the source is incoherent. The time averaged correlation between two different points from the source will therefore be zero. Next, rewrite the R two minus R one display style R underscore two R underscore one term using U V L display style U V L and M display style M. To do this, let P one equals x one y one display style p underscore one equals x underscore one y underscore one and p two equals x two y two Display style p underscore two equals x underscore two y underscore two. This gives r one equals r two plus x one two plus y one two. Display style r underscore one equals sqrt r caret two plus x underscore one caret two plus y underscore one caret two r two equals r two plus x two two plus y two two Display style r underscore two equals sqrt r caret two plus x underscore two caret two plus y underscore two caret two, where r display style r is the distance between the center of the plane of observation and the center of the source. The difference between r one display style r underscore one and R two display style R underscore two thus becomes R two minus R one equals R one plus x two two R two plus Y two two R two minus R one plus X one two R two plus Y one two R two Display style R underscore two R underscore one equals R S Q R T one plus F R A C X underscore two carrot two R carrot two plus F R A C Y underscore two carrot two R carrot two R S Q R T one plus F R A C X underscore one carrot two R carrot two plus F R A C Y underscore one carrot two R carrot two But because 
x 1 x 2 y 1 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 y underscore 1 and y 2 display style y underscore 2 are all much less than r display style r the square roots may be taylor expanded yielding to first order r 2 minus r 1 equals r 1 plus 1 2 x 2 2 plus y 2 2 r 2 minus r 1 plus 1 2 x 1 2 plus y 1 2 r 2 Display style r underscore two r underscore one equals r left one plus frac one two left frac x underscore two carrot two plus y underscore two carrot two r carrot two right right r left one plus frac one two left frac x underscore one carrot two plus y underscore one carrot two r carrot two right right which, after some algebraic manipulation, simplifies to R two minus R one equals one two R x two minus x one x two plus x 1 plus y 2 minus y 1 y 2 plus y 1 Display style r underscore two r underscore one equals frac one two r left x underscore two x underscore one x underscore two plus x underscore one plus y underscore two y underscore one y underscore two plus y underscore one right. Now one two x two plus x one display style frac one two x underscore two plus x underscore one is the midpoint along the x display style x axis between p one display style p underscore one and p two display style p underscore two so one two R X two plus X one Display style FRAC one two R X underscore two plus X underscore one gives us L Display style L one of the direction cosines to the sources. Similarly M equals one two R Y two plus Y one Display style M equals FRAC one two R Y underscore two plus Y underscore one. Moreover, recall that U Display style U was defined to be the number of wavelengths along the x display style x axis between p 1 display style p underscore 1 and p 
2 display style p underscore 2 so u equals omega 2 pi c x 1 minus x 2 display style u equals frac omega 2 pi c x underscore 1 x underscore 2 similarly v display style v is the number of wavelengths between p 1 display style p underscore 1 and p 2 display style p underscore 2 along the y display style y axis so v equals omega 2 pi c y 1 minus y 2 display style v equals frac omega 2 pi c y underscore 1 y underscore 2 hence r 2 minus r 1 equals 2 pi c omega u l plus v m display style r underscore 2 r underscore 1 equals frac 2 pi c omega all plus v m because x 1 x 2 y 1 Display style x underscore one x underscore two y underscore one and y two display style y underscore two are all much less than r display style r r one r two r Display style r underscore one simic r underscore two simic r. The differential area element d s display style d s may then be written as a differential element of solid angle of r two d l d m display style r caret 2 dl dm our expression for the mutual coherence function becomes gamma 12 u v 0 equals source i l m e minus i omega C two Pi C Omega U L plus V M D L D M Display style gamma underscore twelve U V zero equals I I N T underscore text R M source I L M E carrot F R A C I Omega C F R A C two Pi C Omega all plus V M D L D M which reduces to Gamma twelve U V zero equals source i l m e minus 2 pi i u l plus v m d l d m 
Display style gamma underscore twelve U V zero equals I I N T underscore text R M source I L M E carrot minus two Pi I all plus V M D L D M but the limits of these two integrals can be extended to cover the entire plane of the source as long as the source's intensity function is set to be zero over these regions. Hence, gamma 12 u v 0 equals i l m e minus 2 pi I U L plus V M D L D M Display style gamma underscore twelve U V zero equals I I N T I L M E carrot minus two Pi I all plus V M D L D M which is the two-dimensional Fourier transform of the intensity function. This completes the proof. Topic: <laughs> Assumptions of the theorem. The van sittert zernike theorem rests on a number of assumptions, all of which are approximately true for nearly all astronomical sources. The most important assumptions of the theorem and their relevance to astronomical sources are discussed here. Topic: <inaudible> Incoherence of the source. A spatially coherent source does not obey the van sittert zernike theorem. To see why this is, suppose we observe a source consisting of two points. A display style a and b display style b let us calculate the mutual coherence function between p 1 display style p underscore 1 and p 2 display style p underscore 2 in the plane of observation from the principle of superposition the electric field at p 1 display style p underscore 1 is e 1 equals e a 1 plus e b 1 display style e underscore 1 equals e underscore a 1 plus e underscore b 1 and at p 2 display style p underscore 2 is e 2 equals e a 2 plus e b 2 display style e underscore 2 equals e underscore a 2 plus e underscore b 2 so the mutual coherence function is E one T E two T minus Tau equals E A one T plus E B one T E a two T minus tau plus e b two t minus tau display style Langle e underscore one t e underscore two caret asterisk t tau wrangle equals Langle e underscore a one t plus e underscore b one t e underscore a two caret asterisk t tau plus e underscore b two caret asterisk t tau wrangle which becomes e one t e two T minus 
tau equals e a 1 t e a 2 t minus tau plus e a 1 t e b 2 t minus tau plus e b 1 t e a 2 t minus tau plus e b 1 t e b 2 t minus tau Display style Langle E underscore one T E underscore two carrot asterisk T Tau Wrangle equals Langle E underscore A one T E underscore A two carrot asterisk T Tau Wrangle plus Langle E underscore A one T E underscore B two carrot asterisk T Tau Wrangle plus Langle E underscore B one T E underscore A two carrot asterisk T Tau Wrangle plus Langle E underscore B one T E underscore B two carrot asterisk T tau wrangle if points a display style a and B display style B are coherent then the cross terms in the above equation do not vanish. In this case, when we calculate the mutual coherence function for an extended coherent source, we would not be able to simply integrate over the intensity function of the source. The presence of non zero cross terms would give the mutual coherence function no simple form. This assumption holds for most astronomical sources. Pulsars and masers are the only astronomical sources which exhibit coherence. Topic: Distance to the source. In the proof of the theorem, we assume that r x one minus x two display style r g g x underscore one x underscore two and r y one minus Y two display style r g g y underscore one y underscore two. That is, we assume that the distance to the source is much greater than the size of the observation area. More precisely, the Van sittert zernike theorem requires that we observe the source in the so-called far field. Hence, if d display style d is the characteristic size of the observation area e.g. in the case of a two-dish radio telescope, the length of the baseline between the two telescopes then r d 2 lambda display style r g g f r a c d caret 2 lambda using a reasonable baseline of 20 km for the very large array at a wavelength of 1 cm, the far field distance is of order 4 times 10 10 display style 4 times 10 caret 10 m hence any astronomical object farther away than a parsec is in the far field Objects in the solar system are not necessarily in the far field, however, and so the van sittert zernike theorem does not apply to them. <laughs> <laughs> Angular size of the source In the derivation of the van sittert zernike theorem we write the direction cosines L and M display style M as one two x one plus x two r 
Display style FRAC one two x underscore one plus x underscore two R and one two Y one plus Y two R Display style FRAC one two Y underscore one plus Y underscore two R there is, however, a third direction cosine which is neglected since R 1 2 x 1 plus x 2 display style R G G F R A C 1 2 x underscore 1 plus x underscore 2 and R 1 2 Y one plus Y two Display style R G G F R A C one two Y underscore one plus Y underscore two Under these assumptions it is very close to unity. But if the source has a large angular extent, we cannot neglect this third direction cosine and the Van Sittert Zernike theorem no longer holds. Because most astronomical sources subtend very small angles on the sky, typically much less than a degree, this assumption of the theorem is easily fulfilled in the domain of radio astronomy. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Quasi-monochromatic waves. The Van Sittert Zernike theorem assumes that the source is quasi-monochromatic. That is, if the source emits light over a range of frequencies, delta nu, display style delta nu, with mean frequency nu, display style nu, then it should satisfy delta nu nu one, display style frac delta nu nu less than one. Moreover, the bandwidth must be narrow enough that delta nu nu one l u display style frac delta nu nu l l frac one lu where l display style l is again the direction cosine indicating the size of the source and u display style u is the number of wavelengths between one end of the aperture and the other without this assumption we cannot neglect r 2 minus r 1 c display style r underscore 2 r underscore 1 c compared to t display style t this requirement implies that a radio astronomer must restrict signals through a bandpass filter. Because radio telescopes almost always pass the signal through a relatively narrow bandpass filter, this assumption is typically satisfied in practice. <laughs> Two-dimensional source We assume that our source lies in a two-dimensional plane. In reality, astronomical sources are three-dimensional. However, because they are in the far field, their angular distribution does not change with distance. Therefore when we measure an astronomical source, its three-dimensional structure becomes projected upon a two-dimensional plane. This means that the Van Sittert Zernike theorem may be applied to measurements of astronomical sources, but we cannot determine structure along the line of sight with such measurements. Topic. Homogeneity of the medium The Van Sittert Zernike theorem assumes that the medium between the source and the imaging plane is homogeneous. If the medium is not homogeneous, then light from one region of the source will be differentially refracted relative to other regions of the source due to the difference in light travel time through the medium. 
In the case of a heterogeneous medium one must use a generalization of the van sittert zernike theorem, called Hopkins's formula. Because the wavefront does not pass through a perfectly uniform medium as it travels through the interstellar and possibly intergalactic medium and into the Earth's atmosphere, the van sittert zernike theorem does not hold exactly true for astronomical sources. In practice, however, variations in the refractive index of the interstellar and intergalactic media and Earth's atmosphere are small enough that the theorem is approximately true to within any reasonable experimental error. Such variations in the refractive index of the medium result only in slight perturbations from the case of a wavefront traveling through a homogeneous medium. Hopkins formula Suppose we have a situation identical to that considered when the van sittert zernike theorem was derived, except that the medium is now heterogeneous. We therefore introduce the transmission function of the medium K L M P nu display style K L M P nu following a similar derivation as before we find that gamma 12 L M 0 equals lambda 2 i l m k l m p 1 new k l m p 2 new d s Display style gamma underscore twelve L M zero equals lambda carrot two I I N T I L M K L M P underscore one new K carrot asterisk L M P underscore two new D S If we define U L M P one I Lambda K L M P one new I L M display style U L M P underscore one equiv I lambda K L M P underscore one new S Q R T I L M then the mutual coherence function becomes gamma twelve L M zero equals U L M P one U L M P two D S Display style gamma underscore twelve L M zero equals I I N T U L M P underscore one U carrot asterisk L M P underscore two D S which is Hopkins's generalization of the Van Sittert Zernike theorem. In the special case of a homogeneous medium, the transmission function becomes K L M P New equals minus I E I K R Lambda R Display style K L M P new equals F R A C I E carrot I K R Lambda R in which case the mutual coherence function reduces to the Fourier transform of the brightness distribution of the source. The primary advantage of Hopkins's formula is that one may calculate the mutual coherence function of a source indirectly by measuring its brightness distribution. <laughs> <laughs> Applications of the theorem Topic: Aperture synthesis. 
The van sittert zernike theorem is crucial to the measurement of the brightness distribution of a source. With two telescopes, a radio astronomer or an infrared or submillimeter astronomer can measure the correlation between the electric field at the two dishes due to some point from the source. By measuring this correlation for many points on the source, the astronomer can reconstruct the visibility function of the source. By applying the van sittert zernike theorem, the astronomer can then take the inverse Fourier transform of the visibility function to discover the brightness distribution of the source. This technique is known as aperture synthesis or synthesis imaging. In practice, radio astronomers rarely recover the brightness distribution of a source by directly taking the inverse Fourier transform of a measured visibility function. Such a process would require a sufficient number of samples to satisfy the Nyquist sampling theorem, this is many more observations than are needed to approximately reconstruct the brightness distribution of the source. Astronomers therefore take advantage of physical constraints on the brightness distribution of astronomical sources to reduce the number of observations which must be made. Because the brightness distribution must be real and positive everywhere, the visibility function cannot take on arbitrary values in unsampled regions. Thus, a nonlinear deconvolution algorithm like clean or maximum entropy may be used to approximately reconstruct the brightness distribution of the source from a limited number of observations. <laughs> Adaptive optics The van sittert zernike theorem also places constraints on the sensitivity of an adaptive optics system. In an adaptive optics system, a distorted wavefront is provided and must be transformed to a distortion-free wavefront. An AU system must make a number of different corrections to remove the distortions from the wavefront. One such correction involves splitting the wavefront into two identical wavefronts and shifting one by some physical distance s display style s in the plane of the wavefront the two wavefronts are then superimposed creating a fringe pattern by measuring the size and separation of the fringes the au system can determine phase differences along the wavefront this technique is known as shearing the sensitivity of this technique is limited by the van sittert zernike theorem if an extended source is imaged, the contrast between the fringes will be reduced by a factor proportional to the Fourier transform of the brightness distribution of the source. The van sittert zernike theorem implies that the mutual coherence of an extended source imaged by an AU system will be the Fourier transform of its brightness distribution. An extended source will therefore change the mutual coherence of the fringes, reducing their contrast. Topic. Free electron laser The van sittert zernike theorem can be used to calculate the partial spatial coherence of radiation from a free electron laser. Topic. See also Degree of coherence Coherence theory Visibility Hanbury-Brown and Twiss effect Bose-Einstein correlations <laughs>